my beautiful Taurus astrology soulmates. It's me, Stormy Grace, and here's your horoscope for July of 2020. And Taurus, this month, I'm going to just put this out there right away. We're coming into the month with Mars in the energy of Aries, so it's so beautiful. He's at home, domicile, rulership, very comfortable. But for you, it lights up the 12th house space. So Taurus, this month is a month for you to definitely be paying attention. And it's going to be a long stint of paying attention to what's going on in your 12th house, one of which is to make sure you are moving that body so that you make sure you expel some of this energy from this hidden place so you are not left drained and exhausted. So make sure you are taking care of yourself, you're eating well, you're moving, you're hydrating, and you are getting the downtime that you need as well. Mars at home, but in the 12th house is a lot of pump and jump and energy. But it's also very, very good for finishing up projects, getting to research projects. Is there something you've been wanting to study and get deeper into the heart of? This is a wonderful energy for those sorts of things. It's also great for anything having to do with your spiritual practice or things like that. So beautiful set of energies you'll have with you really until the end of the year. But as we're really diving in and experience them this month, I want to make sure that you get enough rest, nutrition, and love-ins that you need, okay? All right. Also this month as we come in though, we've got Venus, your ruling planet, out of retro great so that's nice so we've got some clarity we've got some forward movement when the ruling planet is out of retrograde we tend to feel a little bit more like oh i can breathe i can get some things done so your ruling planet is set she's ready to go she's ready to roll and i also think that she's bringing with you um a fair amount of financial clarity i would tell you if you can wait until after Mercury comes out of retrograde, which will be the 12th of this month, to make any really big financial decisions, that might be great. Now, if you are making financial decisions that are taking you back over a financial decision that you are already making, this would be a perfectly good time to be able to do it before the 12th or, or any time thereafter. And what do I mean by that? For example, COVID, definitely, you know, a good old pandemic will uh, flatten out your, your curve of some plans, right? So something that could have happened is maybe you were right in the middle of getting a contract going. You were going to buy a house. You were going to buy a building. You were going to buy a whatever, and things got kiboshed. Maybe you were even trying to sell, right? And then this is able to come back to the table, and you're able to go back over that contract, go back over, is this the right time to lease, or should I buy, or whatever those decisions are. Those are fine while the mercury is still right retrograde okay all right let's jump in and see what else is happening this month well we come right into this month first of all with Saturn who is still retrograde going to move back though into the energy of Capricorn now this is not new information Taurus you've been looking at this area for quite some time it's been a couple years you've been working on this ninth house area publishing marketing broadcasting study education foreign travel, um, advertising, if that's something that you do for business, international business. That is something these have all been on your table. Definitely anything having to do with legal cases or legal situations. So this is not new information for you, but as Saturn comes back in his retrograde, he says, okay, did you get the lesson? Did you get organized? Or where do we need to get more organized? Where do we need to be more self-disciplined? Maybe where do we need to Capricorn involve some bigger agencies? Is there a connection in government or in law in some way, shape, or form in this area of your life? Is this a shift or a change to um, an educational opportunity that's available to you or an opportunity to get yourself out there? Now, the other part of the ninth house I think is really critical to talk about is the area of faith and belief right? We're at a time in the world where what do we believe? What's our faith? What are our ethics? What do we deem to be moral and valuable? All of these things are on the table, but you've been evaluating them for some time, Taurus. Now will be the time where you're maybe shifting into position to speak to those or to live by those in a way that's a little bit more, um, has more depth to it, okay? Now, just a couple days later, fourth, fifth, depending on where you are in the world, we're going to have a lunar eclipse in the energy of Capricorn as well. So this, again, sucks that energy back into that ninth house space right it's very busy up there we've just recently had Jupiter and Pluto come back and conjunct while they're in retrograde up here now Saturn's back up in here now we're having a lunar eclipse up in here so this is a lot of emphasis on the ninth house work now this particular eclipse also touches it just puts some emphasis on Mars Mercury and Jupiter I think it's important to mention those things because I feel like for you 
this is an indicator of not only a shift in some kind of educational thing, ninth house matters, right? Things that broadcast you or get you out. There's an expansiveness here. But I'm also thinking with this Jupiter energy being right here is that there's, there's this sense of um, like a shift in your money a shift in finances, a shift in, in finances that maybe you didn't see coming. And I don't necessarily think that it is negative. I think this could actually be that you didn't realize there was an opportunity there for you, Taurus, to take advantage of, and now you're going to be able to. And it's like the retrograde energies have kind of helped you go back to something that you didn't even know you had walked past. So I think it's actually a really lovely eclipse. Now, the full moon, this is still our full moon for the month, and the full moon says that something needs to be ended, acknowledged, or adjusted. So we do know that a shift will be created here. But because this area of your chart is going to be eclipsed, instead of lasting four months, it's going to last about six months. So we're going to bring some of these Capricorn ninth house lessons to an end, as well as you crystallize those and let Saturn and this Cancer or this Cancer Capricorn axes move on from us. So you're bringing some things to an ending. I think you've probably done good work. Allow Saturn, allow the eclipse to take you back to see what needs to be reorganized and also what can be restarted from having mastered things in this area of your chart. On the 11th, we see Chiron, our wounded healer. He's an asteroid heading retrograde until December in the energy of Aries. Now, Chiron is our, our hole in our soul, right? Where you, you, you feel like the middle of the donut in your Chiron energy. There's a hurt here. There's something, and especially in the energy of Aries, this is about the identity. There's something about your identity that's maybe been shifting, that there's a wound there. You haven't believed something. You haven't accepted or acknowledged something about yourself. And with Chiron, even though it's the wound it's our greatest teacher as well so if you have learned things if you've overcome things if you've challenged things about your own identity and come to the other side share that with someone else because the way you've hurt is also the way that they've hurt they have the same questions that you have and you can literally by sharing your experience um, keep them from so much pain what is that but a gift in this lifetime when people save us from all of the pain that is not necessarily needed in excess instead they they provide us a way out by showing that we made it out as well you know so I think it's a beautiful set of the Chiron energy but certainly here the question is going to be are you fully in acceptance of who you are what the journeys look like where you are now and the thing I think is most true with this particular retrograde is to thine own self be true Taurus where are you where are you doing you right? Where are you doing what's right for Taurus, what you feel to, that you are called towards? Where are you doing that and allowing your identity to shine through that? On the 12th, we're going to see Mercury coming out of retrograde in the energy of Cancer. And I don't know about you guys, but during the Mercury retrograde, even though I make friends with the retrogrades, and I hope you do too, I know that my gadgets and devices, they just could not get a break. They just could not get a break during this Mercury retrograde. But in the energy of Cancer, I'm hoping that you were able to maybe reconnect with siblings or neighbors or go back to writing projects that maybe you had going before and, and you brought them back out you tended to them with all that third house energy going on. This has also been a beautiful time for writing, right? For writing or studying. If there's something that you wanted to go back to and study or revise, this has been brilliant. Now, as Mercury comes direct here on the 12th, remember Mercury and every other planet, as they come out of retrograde, they need a little bit of time to like get their life together. They're not just like, boom, I'm direct, come get me. You know, it's not like that. They need a couple days. Energies are gradual. Gradual. You can tell Mercury's retrograde. You, the energies are gradual. So let Mercury shift out of his station come more direct and fully be ready to give you his full attention and then you can go ahead and make some decisions you know what decisions have you made have you made decisions on new things you want to study the emotional intelligence available when Mercury is in Cancer is absolutely brilliant. What feels right to your soul to move forward with now? What conversations feel right? I keep seeing for some of you, this is buying a house. This is genuinely just you're buying a house. You're making the agreement to buy the house. So I think that's really beautiful. I look forward to seeing what that actually manifests for you. Please leave me that in the comment section down below. Now, as we're going to end this month, we're going to end with the sun moving into the energy of Leo 
Oh, and this is so beautiful because again, this gives the emphasis of lighting up that fourth house space for you, home, family, real estate, property. We've got Mercury direct in the communications um, sector of your chart. So getting together with the neighbors or in the neighborhood or having the siblings over to the house because the son wants to play in Leo. The sun is home. It's feeling comfortable. He wants to play. He wants to dance. He wants to self-express. There's a little bit of um, laughter. There's a little bit of passion that's available on the table. And I definitely think, you know, during the shutdown time and just everything that's been going on, we're still highly retrograde. With the sun here in Leo, it's a beautiful time to brighten up your home, brighten up the relationships in your home. The sun could also at this particular point, just because it's fourth house, be bringing your attention to a family matter um, that needs you to participate in. It might not even be in your home. It might be the home of maybe a family member of yours or something like that but this is definitely an opportunity to show up big to show up in the generous way that Leo tends to shine and also you are a Venetian energy Venus and Leo energy tend to love each other it's very decadent it's luxurious it's like you know just beautiful scents and you're surrounded by pleasure so hopefully you get the opportunity to create something beautiful in your home something decadent and something that is very much so expressive of Taurus all right you guys I think it's going to be an absolutely beautiful month please keep me posted on what's happening for you in the comment section down below like this video comment share subscribe the solstice gifts are still available and I look forward to seeing you all month long in the continued eat and greets of our astrology friends who are coming over to talk and to teach some astrology to us as well all right you guys I love you and I will see you next month bye everyone